ghost stories. If you enjoy stories of the paranormal, weird experiences, all told in either soft-spoken or whispered videos, then you have come to the right before you put on your headphones, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button and let me know you are enjoying these videos. Hit the notification bell because I do upload twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. So we're going to go ahead and get started and this article from Wikipedia is going to be in several parts. So we're going to go ahead and start with part one. Alabama. The Boynton Oak in Mobile is a southern live oak that reportedly grew from the grave of Charles Boynton in the Potter's Field just outside the walls of Church Street Graveyard. Boynton was tried and executed for the murder of his friend Nathaniel Frost on February the 20th, 1835. He said a tree would spring from his grave as proof of his innocence. The Dr. John R. Drish House in Tuscaloosa has a tower that has reportedly been seen on numerous occasions to be on fire when no fire was actually there. Also, ghostly lights are said to be seen emanating from the house. Gaineswood in Demopolis is reportedly haunted by the ghost of a former housekeeper from Virginia. She was in charge of running the house for General Whitfield after the unalivement of his wife. Her ghost supposedly placed the piano in the music room. Kenworthy Hall near Marion has a fourth floor tower room that is alleged to be haunted by the ghost of a young woman. She sits in a window awaiting the return of a lover who was unalived during the American Civil War. Edmund King House on the University of Montevallo campus in Shelby County is reported to be the site of spectral lights, the sound of footsteps, and other unexplained noises. Pickens County Courthouse in Carleton is alleged to be haunted by the ghost of a former slave, Henry Wells, who was lynched by a mob after being accused of burning down the second county courthouse. Soon afterward, the ghostly image of a face appeared in an upper window of the new Third County Courthouse to profess Wells' innocence. Supposedly, every window pane in the courthouse was broken in a hailstorm one year except for that pane. Pratt Hall at Huntington College in Montgomery is reportedly haunted by a red lady. Huntington was originally a Methodist female college and the red lady is allegedly to be the ghost of a lonely girl who unalived herself. Sturtevant Hall in Selma is purported to be haunted by the ghost of the second owner John McGee Parkman. Parkman, imprisoned by Reconstruction authorities for alleged embezzlement, unalive, was unalived 
during an escape attempt from Cahaba Prison in 1867. Sweetwater Mansion in Florence, Alabama was built during 1828. Both Union and Confederate officers stayed there during their respective occupations of the city during the Civil War. Alleged paranormal activity has been investigated by local paranormal groups and a team from the television show Paranormal State. I apologize if you hear some noise in the background. My dog is taking about 10 minutes to make his bed, so he's digging a bit. My apologies. <laughs> he's cute, so I forgive him. The Tom Bigby River near Pennington is reportedly haunted by the ghost ship Eliza Paddle. So I'm going to stop there for just a second. If you check out my videos, I did do a story on the Eliza Battle. Check it out. Comment below once you've seen it. Tell me what you think. The ship is supposed to return during especially cold, stormy nights to warn of impending disaster. Likewise, the former captain, the James T. Staples, reportedly appears near the site of that disaster at Bladen Springs. Now we're moving on to Alaska. It only has two entries. If you have a ghost story from Alaska, comment below and I'll do a little research on it. Or if you've heard of these two, what's the ghost story here? It just has Alaskan Hotel and Bar in Juneau and West High School in Anchorage. What are the stories? I don't know. We're moving on to Arizona. Birdcage Theater in Tombstone is reportedly haunted. These reports date back to the 1880s. It was investigated on ghost adventures in 2009 and on ghost hunters in 2006. Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee is reportedly haunted. It was investigated on both ghost adventures and ghost hunters. Part of the football field at Lee Williams High School in Kingman lies atop an old pioneer cemetery. Women in prairie gowns and men wearing suits from the 19th century have reportedly been sighted during outdoor graduation ceremonies. Monte Vista Hotel in Flagstaff is reputed to be haunted. A phantom bellboy is said to knock on the door of room 210 and announce room service. John Wayne reported seeing a ghost in his room while staying at the hotel in the early 1950s. Hotel San Carlos in Phoenix is filled with rumors that a 22-year-old girl jumped off the seven-story hotel to her alivement after several weeks when the hotel first opened along with other witnesses saying a girl mysteriously appearing at the foot of their beds for several seconds until she goes to their doors and vanishes. The Yuma Territorial Prison in Yuma is reported to be haunted by m multiple entities, including the spirit of a little girl in a red dress, death row inmates, and others, and has been listed by USA Today as one of the 10 best haunted destinations in the USA. Let's head on down to Arkansas. The Gurdon Light is a mysterious floating light above the railroad tracks near Gurdon, Clark County, a few miles away on Highway 67, which was first sighted 
during the 1930s. A popular le- le- legend is that a railroad road worker was in an accident in which he lost his head. I don't know if I could say the word. So he didn't have a head anymore. And now he is holding a lantern going up and down the tracks searching for his missing head. The other legend involves the um it's M-U-R-D-E-R so I'm just going to change that to Red Rum. So the other legend involves the Red Rum. Uh, we're, uh, we're digressing a little bit. I'm thinking of The Shining so if you have seen it comment below. Tell me what you think. Continuing. <laughs> The other legend involves the red rum of a foreman for the Missouri Pacific Railroad. The curtain light was reportedly sighted shortly after his red rum near those tracks during 1931. The local legend appeared on NBC's television program Unsolved Mysteries, 1994. The Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs bills itself as America's Most Haunted Hotel. It was featured on the television show Ghost Hunters in 2005. And I'm going to add my little own side note. I'm always amazed at the places that coin themselves the most haunted. If you have paranormal activity, you're haunted. How do you say that your place is the most haunted? I think my house that I grew up in with all our stories and all our things that plagued us, that's the most haunted house in my state. I'm gonna coin it right now. Anyway, I just find it funny that, um, there, everything you read is always the most haunted, so I'm going to have to um, find out more about the Crescent Hotel. Moving on, we're headed to California. California is the location of many supposedly haunted locations. Notable locations with reputations for being haunted include Alcatraz, the former ocean liner RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, El Adobe de Capistrano, I hope I'm saying that right, in San Juan Capistrano, and the Winchester Mystery House. Did y'all ever see that movie with Helen Mirren? If you had, comment below, what'd you think about it? Henry Levy House in Oxnard. California was featured on the TV series Ghost Adventures on Thanksgiving night 2022. The episode featured the 108 year old 4,800 square foot home once owned by Henry and Camille Levy and her sister Juliet. Longtime neighbors were also featured in the episode detailing their experiences with the quote-unquote racist Levy sisters. Homeowners Eric Andrist and Jeff Rizzo provided security camera footage of a locked door flying open and a creepy voice captured while the show's host, Zach Baggins, was filming on the second floor. Both Henry and Camille Levy were unalived in the house. Let's head to Colorado. Pioneer Park in Aspen is reportedly haunted by the ghost of Harriet Weber, wife of its builder, who was unalived of what was ruled to be an accidental strychnine overdose during 1881 four years before it was built. What a horrible way to go. Ooh, here comes the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. Was built 
by a Massachusetts couple named F.O. and Flora Stanley. They lived there and reportedly never left. Staff says Flora can be heard playing her piano at night. If you take a picture in the hotel, it is said Mr. Stanley can show up at any time in that picture. Okay, hold on a minute. He can show up at any time in that picture, as in, let's say um, you have your picture and you look at it once, he's in the left-hand corner. You look at it again, he's in the right-hand corner. So if somebody knows the answer, please um, clarify. Children can be heard running up and down the halls. This lovely mountain resort in the Colorado wilderness was the inspiration for Stephen King's thriller, The Shining. Connecticut. Barahack is a ghost town in the northern part of the state that is reportedly haunted. Daniel Benton Homestead is a historic house museum in Tolland, Connecticut. It is reportedly, reputedly, I'm sorry, haunted by the ghosts of Hessian soldiers and 18th century lovers Alicia Benton and Jemima Barrows, who tragically were unalived by smallpox. Dudley Town is an abandoned town founded in the mid 1740s. It lies in the middle of a forested area in Cornwall. The original buildings are gone and only their foundations remain. Videos purport to show restless spirits in the area and hikers have reported seeing orbs in the area. I'm going to stop right there. I have heard of Dudley Town um, in several different occasions and I hear it's quite evil. I don't know if it's haunted, but I hear it's like a portal to hell almost. I watched a video, and if you get the chance, there is a fantastic storyteller on YouTube named Mr. Ballin. If you have seen him, comment below, raise your hand. <laughs> He's amazing, is he not? And he does a story on Dudley Town where an older couple built a house out there. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's freaky and I would never, 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 never step foot in Dudley Town. So if you get a chance, check out Mr. Ballin's channel because that video is on there. I don't remember the name, but and watch all his videos. You're, you're going to enjoy it. Union Cemetery in Easton also Bridgeport, which dates back to the 17th century, is touted as one of the most haunted cemeteries in the entire country. Now, it didn't state that it is, it says one of the most, so I'll give that credit, <laughs> by authors of paranormal books who claim that visitors have photographed orbs, light rods, ectoplasmic mists, and apparitions. A spirit known as the White Lady has also been reported. Norwich State Hospital is a former psychiatric hospital spreading across a 70-acre campus. Before the majority of it was demolished, there were reports of lamenting Patients lamenting, am I saying that right? Lamenting patients near the salmon building and the lobotomy room. It was featured on Ghost Hunters TV series season six, episode ten. District of Columbia. Several sites in Washington are reputedly haunted, including the Capitol Building the White House, and the Octagon House, 1801. Well, I was hoping they'd give a little more detail. 
let's head on down to Florida. Don Cesar Hotel, or maybe it's Cesar, Cesar Hotel in St. Petersburg Beach, Florida, reportedly is haunted by the ghost of its original owner, Thomas Rao, or Rowe, who built the Moorish-style Pink Palace during 1926. The story is that Thomas Rowe was forbidden to marry the love of his life, a singer in the opera Maritana, by her parents. He built the Don Cesar in remembrance of her and named it after a character in the opera. Time is infin infinite. I wait for you by our fountain, she wrote to him on her deathbed. And after his own death, it was reported that they were seen to be meeting by the fountain in the hotel lobby. And now I'm going to um, mess up this name, but I'm really going to try. Oh, gosh. House of Pedro Benedict Horiadiner. I'll spell it. H O. R-U-Y-T-I-N-E-R. -E okay. <laughs> Colonial Governor of Florida in St. Augustine. Alleged encounters with the Horatiner ghost, as well as that of a cat supposedly unalived in the house, have been reported there. The Leaf Theater in Quincy reportedly is haunted by several former movie operators and theater attendees. The University of South Florida Library in Tampa reportedly is haunted. Georgia. Let's go to Georgia. Augusta State University in Augusta. I'm going to give a side note here. These are, this is just a list. So if you hear one and you're interested, maybe you can do a little research. Send me an email or comment below and I can in, maybe, um, collab, what's the word, uh, expand on the story. So let's continue. Igbo's Landing, Igbo Landing, in Dunbar Creek, St. Simons Island, Glen County, is allegedly haunted by the souls of Igbo slaves who committed mass unalivement of themselves by, um, can I say, I'll spell it, D-R-O-W-N-I-N-G there during 1803 to protest their enslavement. Moon River Brewing Company in Savannah is allegedly haunted by angry spirits. It was featured on the TV series Ghost Adventures. Now, I can understand if they were angry during Prohibition, but if you're actually haunting a brewing company, it seems like you'd have a pretty big party. That's just my thoughts. There's one place in Hawaii. Ayalani Palace is said to be haunted. And there's one place in Idaho. A security camera in the Pocatello High School captured a translucent, <laughs> translucent figure going down a hallway and in and out of a bathroom when the school was closed for winter break in 2014. I wonder if that video might be on YouTube. I might have to check it out. People report hearing voices in conversation and the sound of a piano inside the school's otherwise empty theater. Let's go to Illinois. 
Bachelors Grove Cemetery, Midlothian, Illinois, was mentioned on most terrifying places in America. Former Chicago Historical Society building is said to be haunted since its use as a temporary morgue for victims of the Eastland disaster. Anybody know what the Eastland disaster is? Send me a comment. Former Anna State Hospital at Kirkbride Plan Hospital in Anna? That's it. They're not going <laughs> to say anything. Okay. Crenshaw House in Equality. The house was constructed in the 1830s as a station on the Reverse Underground Railroad. In 1978, a reporter from Harrisburg named David Rogers spent the night in the attic as a Halloween stunt for a local television station. The reporter managed to beat out nearly 150 previous challengers and became the first person to spend the night in the slave quarters in more than a century. Rogers later admitted that he was queasy going into the house and also said that his experience in the attic was anything but mundane. He heard many sounds that he could not identify and later he would discover that his recorder picked up voices that he himself could not hear. Whole House, Chicago, Illinois was mentioned on most terrifying places in America. Manteno State Hospital, Manteno, was mentioned on most terrifying places in America. Peoria State Hospital in Bartonville, Illinois, originally named the Illinois Asylum for the Incurably Insane from 1907 to 1908, but later renamed, oh my, my dog's growling, <laughs> ignore him, but later renamed to the Peoria State Hospital in 1909. An additional name for it is the Barton Insane Asylum. And we're going to end in Indiana. And it only gives one little snippet. There are several reputedly haunted sites in Indiana including the Colbertson Mansion in the former shipbuilding town, New Albany. Actually, we're going to end in Iowa, because it only gives one thing here in Iowa. E -A so in Iowa, it's E.H. Harrison House in Keokuk, Iowa. So, that concludes our part one. Stay tuned for part two and more because the list seems long and I'm enjoying it because I'm getting a kick out of some of these places and it's neat because I'm going to do some more research on some of the ones to see what is there. So I hope you liked this video. Hit that subscribe button and the like button and the notification bell so you don't a future video. If you have any ideas or any stories, email me or comment below. But until then, stay a little scared and I'll see you on the next video.